Let's talk about our tiny tips this week, Greg. Um, since we're already, this episode is heavily focused on photos and, and, you know, videos and pictures and things. I thought I'll stick with that theme and talk about one of the things I love watching, right? And this is when I'm doing, when I'm working on, the, on an episode with, uh, for the show or, or doing some kind of other work online for the company or something like that. And that's these 4K HDR city tours that are on, on YouTube, right? So I hadn't always had a 4K TV. I got this, the, this TV, um, it was late last year. So, so it's my first 4K TV. It, it's uh, capable of HDR uh, video and, and all of that. It looks amazing. So I started uh, watching on YouTube these guys. And, and basically what they do is just they'll take a 4K camera, HDR camera, uh, even some higher resolution cameras, 8, 8K and things like that. And they just walk around some of these popular tourist des destinations, right? Machu Picchu, cities in Japan, uh, Germany. Oh, they look amazing. Some of these cities in Germany and things like that. And um, they just look amazing on the on the television. So uh, if you have a 4K TV or even, even if you don't, even some of the older, you know, 1080p TVs, HD TVs, they, I'm sure they'll look you know, just as good on those, but so there's not anyone specific that I'm going to, you know, call out or, or recommend, but just go to YouTube, type in 4k HDR walking tour or something like that, 8k walking tour. And, uh, all of these creators will show up, click on one and just watch those videos. They look amazing. I'm going to have to check some of those out. I've not done that. So, right. Huh. Right. So Machu Picchu is, is on, uh, on our travel list, you know, our travel bucket list, my wife and I, and uh, I've been watching videos of that lately. Not that we're going to get to Machu Picchu anytime soon, but I mean, man, it looks amazing. I mean, you can see like the dirt on the ground and stuff like that. It looks so amazing. So yeah, check those out. Any place that you want to go that you've been wanting to travel to, see if they have one of these HD walking tours and, and take a look at it. I'll have to go check some of those out for Brazil and see yeah. if they have some of the places that I spent time in. So. Right, right. Okay, and then we have one more, one more tip, Greg. You want to talk about? Yeah, shared photo albums. This is what we use this a ton. So this is yeah. a few episodes ago. I told this story about my grandma that's in Colorado when she got her iPhone. I said, "Hey, here, I'm going to send you an invitation. Join this set of photos, and you'll be able to see the photos of the grandkids." And she thought it was the best thing ever, right? right? And so there's family and share it photos. It is. It really is. There's family share photos, which I'm, is not what I'm talking about. I haven't got into that yet. I have a note, we'll talk about it a little bit in the post show, but mm -hmm. these are just creating ad hoc shared photo albums. So like we have one for each of the grandkids. Um, every spring-ish, we start a new one that's called camping, insert year, right? And then we right. just put a whole bunch of pictures up from all of our camping trips. And it's a good way to collate them. I am not OCD about photos. I don't go in and make sure all the metadata is perfect. and any of that right. kind of stuff is just not my thing. Um, but we do use these shared albums a ton. We add people to it. And unfortunately, uh, my wife's parents, they don't get added to this stuff because they're on Android. I wish there was a better way to, to cross platform some of these. So we end yes. up having to, they have a family Facebook group, um, which I won't touch with the 10 foot pole, but they put some stuff right. up in there I'll and we'll send them individual. Too. Yeah, we'll send them individual pictures, but this is one of the best things to be able to do. And, you know, there's been a couple of years where I've created like a calendar, use one of the online services to create a family calendar that had pictures and stuff. And so if I know I need mm -hmm. a picture of this grandkid, I can go into that album. And, um, you know, we don't have to, you don't have to be perfect about doing it, but we do try and share these up, especially some of those camping photos. A lot of times we take the grandkids ca camping without my daughter. And yeah. so instead of sending our individual pictures, we just create an album and yeah, drop the everything up in. there. So that would be my tip. That is a great thing. If you're not using these ad hoc shared albums, great. And it doesn't move the pictures. They still just sit in your library. It just kind of puts right. them into a folder, right? So. Yeah, yeah. And we mentioned before, too, it doesn't take up space on everybody's phones, right? Like um, when we used to have those uh, those family events or whatever, and our family group chat was just full of texts back and forth of everyone sending their pictures and stuff. And we had to get to the point where it's like, no, let's put this in the album and everybody can see everything, right? They can just pick the ones that they want to save or the ones that they want to share on their social medias and things like that. So yeah, I, no, really I, good tip. I think that's good. 
my one piece of advice before Jason leads us through a bunch of this stuff is if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff, just leave Apple's default settings alone. Right. Right. They're going to, you're going to take pictures and you're not going to run out of space on your phone because it's going to automatically move them to the cloud for you. Right. So you're not going to run out of space if you leave things alone. If you do these shared photo albums, it's not going to put undo storage on whoever you're sharing these with. Like if you've got grandma or grandpa that has a super small storage phone, right? You don't need to worry about doing that. I mean, I've checked my grandma's yeah. and my mom's phones and they don't even use half of the storage on the entry level. Right. So if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff and just want to enjoy taking pictures, just do it. Just leave the default settings alone. Just leave them alone. Right. And you should be okay. Right. So before we jump in, though, you piqued my curiosity. When you look at your mom's storage, what was the, uh, was it still photos taking up most of the storage? Was the biggest chunk or was it music? No. I, I pick her for a music lover like you are. She is, but she would just stream. I mean, she okay. had a she had Amazon had an Amazon device in her kitchen that she would stream from, and right, right. Um, but she did in the iPod days. We used to get her a new iPod every couple of years, and she'd rip mm -hmm. all of her CDs and stuff, and you know, she would load those things up. But no, the thing that took up the most space were the games that the grandkids had. The games loaded yeah. on the phone, right? <laughs> so okay. I figured it would still be video, but I don't know. I just, I just kind of was expecting you to say music. No, nah, I mean, she had all of the optimized storage stuff still on. I didn't yes. let her turn any of that off. So it just wasn't a problem. Okay, good, good. 